right, welcome everyone to our webinar today. Uh, we're gonna do some quick intros while we give everyone a chance to join, um, but we are gonna be talking about how to distinguish your business from your competition today. So really important topic and we're glad you've all joined us. Um, I am Hannah Curtis. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Small Business Development Center, uh, we are the North Metro SPDC. We cover mostly Adams and Broomfield counties. Um, and we offer free one-on-one -on -one consulting services for businesses, as well as uh, educational programming, like these webinars and some online courses that we have available as well. So I'll put some links into the chat about some of those resources if you're interested. Um, and we want this to be as interactive as possible. So please, you know, when you have questions, feel free to put those in the chat um, and we can get to those um, at the end of the presentation today. Um, and oh, we are recording is the other thing I wanted to mention. So we are recording the session. I will be uploading it to our video library later this afternoon, which um, is on our website. And you can actually access any of our past webinars there in the video library. We record all of them. So really great resource. Um, and I'll also send the follow-up email to everyone who registered with the recording and the slides as well. So don't feel like you have to scramble to take notes. Uh, you will have access to all the materials. Um, so with us today, we have Mike Saunders. He's one of our marketing consultants. He's a um, best-selling author and um, authority, mar authority marketing strategist, I believe, which I think we'll hear more about. So, um, so happy to have Mike with us today. And with that, I will turn it over to you, Mike. Awesome. Thank you, Hannah. And this will be a fun four-hour presentation. I should have much laughter. <laughs> anyway, I, I don't know. I wasn't really given a time limit, but I could make my PowerPoint presentation 20 minutes or two hours. So I'll just kind of flow and we'll just kind of see how it goes and keep it nice and moving along really quickly. And one thing that I would like to say at the beginning of this, there is no pitch. There's nothing to buy. In fact, I'm giving you a copy of my book at the end of the presentation. So zero strings, no push anything. This is all pure knowledge of how businesses should be considering marketing. And what I'm going to show you is a strategy, not tactics. I'll mention some tactics, but this is not something you should start doing and stop doing everything else. This is something that when you do this authority positioning, all your other marketing works better. And I'll, I think you'll be able to see that as we go along. So I'm going to get our um, screen share started and we will have a good conversation. So this is um, this is kind of like the first slide. I kind of start with how to use an authority positioning portfolio to get new clients. You know, you might call your customers customers or members or, you know, donors. But the point is, how do you how to be positioned as an expert. And I, I think one of my slides, I'll, I'll, I have a little screenshot of this, but I've got a federal trademark on the phrase authority positioning portfolio. And it's kind of like a graphic designer's portfolio or web designer or a financial portfolio. It's a collection of all the, you know, clothes, websites, financial products that you have. Well, an authority positioning portfolio is a collection of all of your expert positioning assets. I call them authority positioning assets. Um, that you have that you can use in your marketing, um, outbound and inbound, and we'll talk about some of those things too, so that <clears throat> people see you as an expert and an authority without you having to say it. And that's pretty big. So um, I, I call my one of my programs that I that I have uh, mass authority because you need massive authority, but mass stands for a mini audio seminar series. And basically, it's this. This is not today. This is not a two-hour webinar with a big old pitch because those webinars that you've all attended, we've all attended, um, we get you know tired. You know, it's like okay, I know that you've got about twenty minutes of teaching, and then you're just push, 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 pitch, 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 and it just gets laborious. So my my thing is, I'm railing against that in the industry, and I'm teaching people how to take their content and really laser target it and get it into digestible chunks, and creating this mini audio seminar series. So we'll talk about that. I'll tell you how how you could do some of these things on your own. Um, and so just a little bit about me, um, I think if you know, notice down there in the lower right, there's that little uh, screenshot of the authority positioning portfolio trademark. I've got another one on the phrase brevity book because I help um, people become an Amazon bestseller without writing a word. But I do it with these brief, quick, hard hitting books that are business development. So brevity book. I've got five books. This is just three of them here. Authority selling brevity plus clarity equals authority and authorize your agency. 
I've got an um, award-winning podcast. I've done 925 episodes on my podcast, Influential Entrepreneurs, and I'm a Forbes contributor. I've got 18 articles on Forbes. So all of these things, this this is you know a, a snapshot of part of my authority positioning portfolio because when someone were to look at myself at a glance. You know, I don't like to send people, oh, there's my website, because they can see videos and they can see blog posts and they can see links to social media, and then that gets people distracted. I've got a really unique tool, and I'll show you a little screenshot of it a little bit later, where it's like everything about me in one glance. If you want my social media, there it is. If you want to see my podcast, there it is. Forbes articles, there, book. So it's really something that this is kind of like more of an intro to me, but I want you to think about how can you be creating these things for your business ongoing. This is not something that you do once check the box and say, okay, cool, I've got it. This is a mindset and a philosophy. So we're going to talk today how to build authority positioning on Google, how to be perceived as the go-to expert in your niche, how to create a mini audio seminar series, and how to draw prospects through the buyer's journey. So I'll just touch on a, a couple of these here uh, on this slide. Um, most businesses, we didn't take the time to go around and say, give me your you know, elevator pitch, but most businesses these days probably don't need to pay big dollars for SEO, search engine optimization. You know, um, I know that some businesses is really helpful for that, but for the most part, um, a lot of, of a lot of you will have referrals and networking from the gym, church, rotary, Kiwanis, wherever where people are, you know, recommending you. Well, when that happens, even before they connect and set up an appointment or call or email, they are Googling your name and your company name. What do they see? And this is not, you know, typically you hear that and it's like, oh, you know, fix your bad reviews or get reviews. And that's a piece of things. I'm not, I don't even know that I talk about that here today, but it ties into authority. But your Google resume is huge. And when when you Google yourself, your name and your company, and the reason I say name and company is because a lot of times someone's name, you know, it's it's common enough that there's plenty of people all across the country and, and the Google first page results are, are mixed. But if you put your name and your company, now it's mostly you. We want them to see more than your website, your Facebook, your LinkedIn. That's what people expect to see. We want them to see authority positioning assets so that they go, ooh, that's pretty legit. I am going to keep that, that phone appointment with them, or I am going to reach out and connect with them. So that helps for you to do number two, which is be perceived as the go-to expert. And then we'll, I touched on the mini audio seminar uh, uh, um, series because it's really important to realize people are distracted quickly. People don't have time to sign up for a two-hour webinar. They might not even sign up because it's a webinar for two hours because they know it. And even if they sign up, they don't show up. And if they show up, they're going to be distracted. So it's it, you want these quick, easy little pops, which goes along with my uh, uh, trademark phrase, brevity book. 63% of all books that you buy, you won't even finish reading. And you wanted to buy it in the first place. That's just what research shows us. So if you can have something that's quick, easy to consume and hard hitting and positions you as an expert in the, in the process, you've got to win. And then drawing prospects through the buyer's journey. No matter what your business is, most of the time, it's not like, oh, I, we sell pencils. Do you want red or blue? Most of the time, your service or your, or your product, people have to make some decisions about. They have to learn and understand. And there's certain things that they have to understand before they you know, make that buying decision. That's the buyer's journey. So when you can identify what the buyer's journey is for your business, maybe you you go, okay, well, I'm going to talk to my top clients or my last 20 customers and go, hey, what were some of the things you were worried about? Or what was, well, when you can get those three, four, five, 10 questions, right? And probably no more than 10. Now you can create content around those questions so that you get it out there online, blogs, social media, email, your website, so that people start educating themselves about that and it draws them closer and closer to you. And when you can do that with authority positioning assets, it really, really makes the um, the, the job easier. So uh, three easy questions. Do you look for high value clients? Hopefully so. Do you agree with the research that people trust experts, verified experts? And if I could show you a way to be seen as a celebrity expert, would that be interesting? Hopefully so. And if this could be done to create omnipresence, so you're seen as an expert, would that be interesting? So you have to think about something. When you are following up with your prospects, is it always by email? Is it always by whatever, phone or text? 
it needs to be a, a variety of uh, mediums because people will just ignore and tune out the one. They can hit, you know, unsubscribe with the email or create an outlook rule or whatever the case is. So you need to have omnipresence where people are seeing you online, on social media, in their mailbox, you know, all of that. So that's something to be to be cognizant of is omnipresence. So think of this, wherever prospects, your prospects find you, they also find your competition. And the trick is, or the problem is getting them to choose you. Because here's the big issue. If you really, really, really took your top three competitors and and you all, I don't know, got in a room and was like, okay, here's the, the you know, my, our pitch. And if someone really extracted out of your pitch and your services and your product and compared it, laid it on a piece of paper, on a whiteboard, on a, on a conference room, and was like, okay, here's how you compare to your competition. It's rare that you stand out head and shoulders above the competition. It's pretty rare. You know, oh, well, we have great customer service and 20 years experience and we have a great product that great review. So does your competition most of the time. Now, if you have something that's earth shattering and, you know, groundbreaking, wonderful, but even then you got to make sure that you're standing out as an expert. So getting people to choose you is really, really huge. Um, So I, oh, I just want to check that chat to make sure it wasn't for me. Okay. Um, so you want a proven marketing system. So we can stop right there and go, okay, marketing system means there's things that integrate together. There's things that in your outreach, your business development, that one thing um, um, ties in with the other. So proven marketing system, increase your revenues. You need that. You need a higher return on every marketing dollar. Um, and the problem is shiny object syndrome. We've all heard of that, right? We all have a little touch of it here and there, which is which is like, you know, oh, that looks good. And you look at your Facebook feed or Instagram or whatever, and it's like, ooh, that looks really good. I'm going to try that. The problem is you try something, but not long enough to give it enough chance to create momentum and actually work. Oh, I, I tried that thing before and it didn't work. Well, the four seconds that you tried it, maybe you could have tried it for a little bit longer. And you think about all the things you're taught to do. Facebook ads. Yeah, we send someone from a Facebook ad to your landing page, to a webinar, to a book call, and we're filling your calendar. Yeah, for somebody, but my personal experience is it just doesn't work that way. My business has been built over the last, you know, 12 to 14 years, networking, personal relationships, LinkedIn, but moving LinkedIn from, you know, LinkedIn contact to let's talk or let me interview you on my podcast or, hey, we ought to connect up for a quick chat. It's relationships and networking and it's net. What? What was the second part of that word? Oh, yeah. Working right? It's not net, let me click a button and send me, you know, your business. It's networking. It takes work. It does take effort. So we want you to remember that there's a lot of things you could be doing from Facebook ads, Google ads, and, and leads groups, and direct mail, and, and email blast. But you have to solve the main problem, which is obscurity. People really don't fully understand what you do and that you exist. Yeah, they've heard of you or whatever. Maybe it's your target audience, but something's not clicking. And that's what we want to solve by showing you how to become an expert authority. So can that authority position portfolio help you consistently get high value referrals and close more business easier and faster? That's what we want to focus on. Um, and, and let me uh, touch on consistently get high value referrals. Many businesses, if we were to say, hey, raise your hands, um, how do you get your business? Referrals would be one of the top ones, but probably if you peeled it back, it's like mm, you get some referrals, but it's not as much or consistent as you wish. Um, and we're going to touch on how to, when you get that lead, whether it's referral or networking or whatever, how to convert that to business quicker and faster. So let me give you this example. Um I'm an 80s aficionado from pop to rock to hair hair metal. So I'm uh, love me some 80s music. And do you remember the Bonnie Raitt song? Let's give them something to talk about. You probably hear that bouncing around your head even now. Well, when you ask your clients or your your referral sources, hey, keep me in mind when you have a contact that needs whatever you do. They're like, oh yeah, we love you. And then they forget, they get busy and they're distracted. Well, let's give them something to talk about. What if you had that authority positioning asset that, that we're focusing on here, which is a piece of that portfolio? What if you had that asset, like let's just say you were interviewed on a podcast 
you know, hey, I'm going to email this out to my uh, clients. Hey, I was just um, interviewed on this podcast talking about how we are setting the trend in the industry on blah, blah, blah. Just thought you'd like to take a listen. Let me know what you think. Hey, by the way, if you know of a person or two that you can forward it to that might benefit from it, feel free. Have a great day. You didn't say forward it to everyone on, you know, the, on your Christmas list or everyone you've ever communicated with. You just said a couple, three people. Now they're listening to it like, oh, my word, that was so great. Congratulations. Hey, you know what? I'm going to send this over to Betty. You know, hey, we were talking about that just the other day. So that's the kind of way where when you can have some of these authoritative assets out there that build your portfolio, um, you can use it to get in front of people to get referrals because – your client might have um, that friend, Betty, but what's going to be the impetus to get them to bring you up in conversation? Well, maybe it's that podcast interview. Oh, yeah, John's my guy. He does my whatever stuff, and he was just interviewing this podcast. It was really good. thought you might like to listen. So that's the kind of thing that we're talking about here. So use correctly. This preframes you as the obvious choice. So I want you to think about something when someone is referred to you. A, or maybe they see your LinkedIn and they reach out to you. They really don't know much other than, okay, I've heard of that person, so I guess I'll reach out. But you want them to realize that you are legit. And maybe they do take that step and book that call, that Zoom call or a phone appointment. And they might they might you know bag it and, and not show up. So you want them to go, oof, I I um I really think this is amazing. And let me just tell you, you know, I'm a marketing consultant here. I'm in Arvada. And I'll give you an example of how I do this right here, this preframe. Um, when someone books a, a call, a, like a, a complimentary consultation discovery type call with me, hey, let's just get to know each other, or someone refers them and they book that call, um, I use, a number one, an appointment booking system, which hopefully everyone does, like, okay, here's my calendar, book it, and then it reminds them and all that. But the minute it comes in, I send them um, what I call, I've got this little, you know, pre-made email. I, I use it in Outlook. It's called Quick Parts. So I just go click, click, and it populates in. But however you do it, you know, maybe you have a little document pulled up, you copy and paste. But basic, it, basically, it is, hey, I'm looking forward to our call next week. I'm looking forward to get to know you. Hey, between now and then, here's um, some things you can check out. Here's my link to my Forbes articles. Here's a podcast interview where I talked about, and here is whatever the case is, and you know, have a nice day. Also, this link, link right here is to a little, uh, a couple of podcast interviews where I teach my my philosophy of authority positioning. Go ahead and check, check this out. When you fill out the little um, response form and it comes back to me, I'm going to donate $25 to the JDRF, the um, Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, in honor of my daughter who has type 1. Thanks. Have a great day. So it's a way that right there is a way to um, seed and preframe them as, okay, I'm going to click on a couple of those things. And wow, that's pretty cool. Maybe they don't even listen to the podcasts or the whatever, but they checked out that it was there. So it preframes the meeting. But every once in a while, I get that form back in where they fill it out and it probably takes about 15, 20 minutes to listen to this. And then I've got some little questions. So it's almost like a little mini assignment. And then as soon as it comes in, I go make a donation, take a screenshot and say, hey, thanks. As I promised, here's the $25 donation. Talk to you later. Have a nice day. Just sets a nice tone. So I want you to think about that pre-frame really, really uh, powerfully. So why is authority positioning even a thing? Um, this is something you can Google later, but this is, um, I'll give you like the bird's eye view of, of why authority and why it works. Stanley Milgram um, was a psychologist at Yale, and he conducted experiments on the conflict between obedience to authority and personal conscience. So it's one of these, you know, university studies, and it's like, okay, this is what the study did. I'm going to tell you a little bit about it here. And then this is why what I'm talking about here is so powerful. So the experiment worked with three individuals, the one running the experiment, and they're the one kind of like in the white lab coat, the clipboard, if you can picture that. The subject of the experiment, which was like someone sitting in one room in a chair at a table, and then the volunteer. So think, picture, um, the there's like the plexiglass, you know, like in the police lineup. So someone's in the one room at a table, and then here's the glass. You you can see them, they can't see you, and then you're there with the person in, in the white lab coat, the clipboard. And they're telling you, okay, we're going to ask a series of questions. And when they answer it, I'm going to tell you if the answer is right or wrong. If it's right, we're going to push the green button. It's going to light it up. And okay, good. We're going to ask them number two. When it's wrong, you're going to push the red button. They're going to get a, a electric shock. Every time they make another wrong answer, it gets worse and worse of a shock. Well, obviously it was not 
a shock, but the person doesn't know that. And all of a sudden it started getting worse and worse shocks and the person is screaming out in pain, supposedly. But here's the deal. At some point, the person's like, good night, I'm hurting that person. So no, I'm no, I'm not going to do this. And the person with the clipboard, like almost doesn't even look up, please continue. And they're like, okay, and we do it again. Maybe a couple more no's. It's like, I can't do this. The experiment requires that you continue. It's absolutely, you know, they, so this was the response. It's not like, well, what you need to realize is this is for, no, it's just like, boom, boom, boom. So the result, they predicted 3.73% of the subjects would continue. But in the first set of experiments, 65% administered the final massive shock. So here's you going, okay, that's what I'm told to do. I'm at Yale University, right? So you're co-positioned in a place of authority. Here's this person that looks like a scientist telling me to do this. All right, administer the finer, final shock. So this proved that the marketplace will blindly believe the words of an expert. And that's where I, we, you know, this is where it's typically said, use this power, you know, ethically and wisely, because we don't want to mislead. If we don't, of course not. But this shows the power of what someone in a position of authority is able to accomplish. So could, how can that be you in your business? How can you elevate? Now you might say, oh, I'm trusted. Good. But could we amp it up just a little bit more? Can we polish it up just a little bit more? Um, and uh, another kind of, I, I love the, the, you know, the Napoleon Hills from the twenties and, you know, these older, cause this is like the foundational reason behind psychology, the psychology of making decisions and marketing and, and things like that. But there's another one, uh, Ziff and he's, he's, so Milgram says the, the marketplace will blindly believe the words of an expert. Ziff Salah says your ideal clients intentionally narrow their cho choices that are on top because you're busy. You are searching for whatever online or, or researching wherever, and you don't have time to go interview 10 people. You want to narrow it down to, you know, the top, the top ones of that. And, and let me tell you, um, this is, this is what, what I do on Amazon. Maybe you're like me. I go and I'm looking for a certain thing. In fact, literally this morning, you know, this is my uh, po podcast microphone set up. Um, and I've got, um, you know, a nice little recording studio here, here in my home. Um, and today I just upgraded and ordered, uh, you know, a nice top high end quality, uh, new microphone setup. Guess how I made that choice. I went on to Amazon and I picked the top three, um, uh, microphones and I went, you know, right click, open a new tab, open a new tab. And I looked at the top three and I'm like, oop, this one doesn't have as many reviews. This one has 8,000 reviews. Good. And now let me read through. And so we do that. We look at the ones that are on top. I don't have time to look at the top 20. I just want to look at the top two, three, four, and make my decision based on what I know about the industry and what other people are saying. That's what your clients are doing. So the power of Milgram's Law is you become the expert, even if you're st starting from scratch, but you must understand how to leverage Milgram and Zip's Law along with your authority positioning portfolio so that you create a virtual blockade around your business to optimize your brand. You want your best clients understanding and knowing that you provide such high quality and you're trusted that even with one of your competitors comes along and taps them on the sh shoulder, so to speak, they're like, oh, no, 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 I'm good. You know, that's what they need to say in their mind. So that's, this is one piece of this methodology. And one of the things that I didn't put in my little bio slide is um, for the last 12 years, I've taught marketing strategy at three universities online. So I am um, taking the ideas of marketing and strategy and branding. And then when I work with my clients, I can say, hey, students, look, this concept in the textbook, um, this is, you know, valid. Let me show you what I do in, in with my clients. Here's how I'm applying it. And then I go to my clients and I go, hey, here's this thing I'm doing. This has academic validation because. And so when I bring these things like to you, like these um, studies, this, I, 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 it just is ingrained to me to validate and provide support. So when I say people will trust you if you're an authority, let, let's, let's prove it. And so this right here is one of the main proofs. Um, and this is something interesting. Would you trust this guy? Seven steps to scale your business to seven figures. Now, this is a screenshot from my Facebook from January of 2019. This was an actual ad and underneath of it was buy my course to do whatever. And I'm going, I don't know who this is. I don't even remember what the ad you know, was for other than scaling your business. But if you are like me, I'm not paying him a dime. 
you know, if you are scaled your business to some figures, I'd hope you would put a better picture and you'd be more than 12 years old. So most people would not trust this person. And that's the way that many times our branding looks. Now, branding is way more than your logo and your website. It's Those are aspects of it, but it's the position you own in the mind of your target audience. One last kind of research uh, proof here is this is a Canadian philosopher, Marshall McLuhan. He wrote a book in the 60s called The Medium is the Message. He said the way we send and receive information is more important than the information itself. So where your content is seen gives as much value as the actual content. So what could that look like? Let's just say that you whatever it is, you know, you're a financial advisor. I work a lot with financial advisors or chiropractors or attorneys, and you have the solution for whatever that it is. You just know it. You've, you've, you've worked with so many of your clients and you've got that solution. So you package it up in a five page PDF. That's everything that you worked in your whole career and how it makes dramatic difference in your, your um, client's lives. And you put that PDF and email out to people, eh, you know, it's a PDF and they scan it and whatever, but okay. So now I'm going to put on my website and still people are like, I don't know, because they know subconsciously that all you have to do is go copy, paste, put it on your website, whatever. Then you put it on LinkedIn and Facebook and it's like, okay, yay, like, 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 whatever. But that same information that really could change the world in the in in their life, you know, like let's just say you have the solution for foot pain and that's a big thing for people and you write up a, a, a um, you know, your results and people ignore it until they're like, oh, my word, wait a minute, you were featured in the media? I'm going to take a look at that. Oh, you wrote a book about foot pain and how you can eliminate with three easy steps? I'm all in. Or you were interviewed on? So those are the things that you need to realize, back to that, that point, where your content is seen gives as much value as the actual content itself. So people look for experts. They just do. So um, you, I touched on the buyer's journey. So if you don't know the buyer's journey, like actually the three to five to 10 questions that your prospects go through in their mind or actually in their research, you know, you think about the last time you bought a car, didn't you almost exactly, you know, this is just an example, but didn't you walk into the dealership and kind of have a, your you know, papers in your hand and go, okay, I want this car, this model, this color with these features at this price. And if not, um, I'm, I can go right down the road because you had done all the research. You went online and you found this model versus this model. You knew what you wanted. What is your client, your prospect customer's buyer's journey? What do they have to understand in their mind to make a buying decision for you? Two, what is your current process from moving that interest to prospect to a paying client? So using the example about, oh, I was referred by Betty. Um, I just want to get some more information. Okay, good. Let's set up a time to chat. From that moment to the time they're swiping their credit card or writing you a check, what's, what is your process? You bet, hopefully you have a process and it's not just, well, you know, if they want to work with me, they, they, then they will. People get busy. You have to have a process. What's the average commission on a new client or sale or whatever that you have to think about a revenue. And the reason I bring that up is lifetime value of a customer. When you know that, let's just use the number $2,000. Um, in fact, I've seen a study before where the average customer for a dry cleaner is worth about $2,000 over the, the time they use the dry cleaner, may, might be several years. So if you knew that it was $2,000 and they came in with a complaint because there was a stain and you knew that you didn't do it, but the fact that that person is worth $2,000, maybe you're going to go give it to me. We're going to fix this. We're going to make it right. It might cost you $4 in, in extra labor or whatever, but you're like, I'm making it right. Or you might also go, hey, I'm going to spend some money. I'm going to invest some money in marketing to get that new customer because I know over time it's worth $2,000. So you need to know the average dollar figure. That might take some time to figure it out from the length of time they stay with you, the dollar amount they spend, referrals, upsell, cross-sell, but you need to have that figure. And then think about this. Um, and, and again, we're in a forum where I'm just kind of, you know, talking and teaching. But if we were in a room or, or in like an interactive forum here, I'd go, how many people have done Facebook ads? And m many people of you would say, yeah, yeah, I've done them. Or Google ads. Guess how long that campaign lasts and benefits you? Well, you know, I could start the timer and go, okay, you have 10 seconds to think about it. It doesn't matter. It lasts as long as you keep paying them because the minute you stop paying Facebook for that ad campaign, poof, they're gone. And those ads that you had that people even maybe were making comments on, they're gone. Whereas an authority marketing strategy is permanent. 
And so that's what I want you to keep in mind here. This is what authority marketing can do for you. I want to just talk through a couple points here. This is a snippet from one of my Forbes articles. If you felt like taking a screenshot or Googling the title, you can read the whole article on Forbes online. But um, it's about an authority positioning portfolio, optimizing the buyer's journey. We talked about that and how a unique event called ZMOT will draw clients to you. Well, ZMOT stands for Zero Moment of Truth. The moment of truth used to be, I bought your product, do I like it or not? The zero moment of truth is everything that happens before they buy the product, the buyer's journey. So how do you research whatever product or service that you are making a purchase decision on? Maybe you're going to look online, maybe you're going to talk to people, but somehow, some way, you are going to have your prospects looking around, learning and educating themselves about your product or service. How can you use that authority positioning portfolio to help educate your target audience to have them learn the points about the buyer's journey, the zero moment of truth to draw clients to you? So here's an example. This is a a podcast that I was interviewed on. So I made this graphic um, and I use it in my marketing, but scan this QR code to listen to my recent podcast interview. You know, stand out from your competition by being an authority, being educator and an advocate for your target audience's success. So people in the financial services industry know what Model FA is. They're like, oh, wow, if Mike was on that show, that's pretty cool. Let me listen to that. And so I could use that in my outreach, whether it's maybe an email newsletter or a website or social media, and people can listen to that. And maybe they don't listen to the whole 22-minute um, interview or however long that it was, but the, they get there and they're like, okay, I, I listened to a little bit of that. And and they kind of check off in their mind, okay, that's pretty legit. And maybe then they're in my follow-up sequence and the next thing that comes out, they're going to pay attention to. But you're using this as like a breadcrumb trail, drawing people to you so that they're educating themselves on what solution you provide for their, their problems. And you're doing it in that elevated way. Because this right here is a high profile podcast. And so now I'm using that asset. Here's another one. How do you enhance lead follow-up? So this is another article there you can read um, later, but the point is, let's say you get that referral, you book that call, Zoom, in-person, in your office, whatever the case is, and it's just a discovery call. We're just getting to know each other. Well, before that that appointment, whether it's phone or or Zoom or in-person, maybe you send an email that goes, hey, I'm looking forward to getting to know you. It's Friday at 2 p.m. and here's the directions or here's the Zoom link. Have a great day, right? Something just to confirm. How many times have you heard, maybe you guys have 100% show up ratio, but typically someone is going to book that appointment and not show up. How can we pre-frame your expertise so that they show up more? So here's an example. Um, Hey, John, I'm looking forward to our upcoming meeting next week where we'll get to know each other and show you how I approach serving clients to help them plan for retirement if you're a financial advisor here. This will be a discovery meeting, so no selling or recommendations. I merely want to get to know you and what your objectives are for retirement. From there, we'll be able to research some recommendations to present for your consideration. Before a meeting, feel free to listen to a recent podcast episode where I was interviewed about my philosophy serving my clients and what sets our firm apart. Here are the links to the interview so you can select the one you listen to your audio programs on. Make it a great day. So now, what does this do? It's a nice touch base. It's a, oh, okay, the first meeting is not some push-push sales, so that's good. But also it's pre-framing the expertise. And why didn't I just do some long link, long link? I wanted to create this as a, this example here as, you know, Spotify and it's hot link. Like, oh, you're on Spotify? That's pretty cool. Oh, I do Audible. Good night, Pandora. So this right here is the same interview, but just pick your, you know, pick the one that you like most and then look at the as featured on. This is another way that is like this social proof. This person is legit. If you're emailing me this and you've been featured on and I can listen to that um, interview, I'm going to keep that appointment for next week. I'm looking forward to this. So that's just an example there of that pre-frame that I was mentioning. And then the last one here is how you can use that authority positioning portfolio to close more deals. So now you had that meeting, they showed up, you had a nice time and you said, hey, I'm going to get back with you at the end of this week with some recommendations based on what I learned here. So um, watch for my email or we'll set up a following, uh, a follow-up appointment. In fact, as a sidebar, um, have you ever heard of BAMFAM, B-A-M-F-A-M? It's an old school sales uh, technique called book a meeting from a meeting. So at that discovery meeting, hey, it's good to get to know you here. I've got a page full of notes. I'm going to make some recommendations and and let's get back together. So let's grab our calendar. What works um, next week? So, okay, good. Thursday at two. Good. Let's book it there and we'll see you then. So they leave the office or Zoom or call or whatever. And you then send another email that goes, 
so wonderful getting to know you. I've got some great ideas already. I'm going to look forward to meeting you next Thursday and I can share them with you. But maybe <clears throat> in that email is yet another one. Hey, between now and then, we, you know, we were talking about the blah, 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 whatever. I was interviewed on a podcast talking about that very topic. Thought you might like to check it out. Here it is. See you next Thursday. Because now what you're doing is you're knowing your buyer's journey, your client's buyer's journey. And you know that at the very beginning, they're really wondered about, you know, just how you do business. So you use that as the preframe to book to solidify the appointment. But you know that predominantly when you meet with people, most of the people are going to have, you know, the, the same three gen, gen, general questions or generic questions or variations thereof. So you can you can have your little um, e uh, podcast interview series that you have at the ready. And it doesn't have to be a graphic or a QR code, although it's really easy to do. But you see how these things are folding together. Maybe they're leaving your office going, okay, they were pretty good. I really um, like what I'm looking forward to what, um, what they're talking about. But yeah, I was kind of wondering about the whatever. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's a podcast. That's cool. So that's just another example there. So authority trust triggers. People want to work with experts. Authority trust triggers position you as a recognized expert. And what's a trust trigger? What I've been showing you. Podcast interview. Featured in the media, you know, I was interviewed on, um, oh, I wrote a book or whatever the case is, I was featured in a book. So it makes people justify the decision to work with you because it's like, oh, you know, I know they're a little bit more, but man, I'm not going to waste my time on whoever else out there, the person that has the Yahoo or Hotmail email address. I'm going to work with that person because I know I'm going to get the best advice. And the authority mindset is being an educator and an advocate for your target audience. So you're at, you're teaching. You're not pushing and selling and closing. You're teaching. You're guiding. Um, you are showing all um, alternate, you know, hey, you can consider this or consider this. Your call. But just want you to understand kind of what, what you're up against. So it's it's teaching people, um, empathizing. Yeah, you know what? I know this is a tough situation for you. It's a really, really big decision. But here's what, uh, what people need to, to keep in mind. Give value, solve problems, and most of all, be so diligent in your product or service that you know that it does solve people's problems so that you deliver results. That's what's huge. Um, this is a really great quote from Dan Kennedy. Um, he's really, really uh, well-respected in uh, marketing and direct marketing. But he says, if you aren't deliberately, systematically, methodolic, me uh, me uh, methodically, methodically, <laughs> got that one, uh, tongue twister, rapidly and dramatically establishing yourself as a celebrity, at least to your clientele and target op market. That You don't have to think about being on CNBC um, or the nightly news. It's just to your being a big fish in your pond, right? You're asleep at the wheel because this is what fuels the entire economy and it neglects a measurably valuable asset. That's what authority positioning will do for you. Here's just an example. Um, this is a client that I did a um, uh, package for, interviewed him, did a press release, and he sent me this uh, screenshot. He's like, oh, hey, I'm pleased to announce my recent podcast interview got syndicated, link the first comment. So there's the link down there. And I forget how many days that from April 18, but he, let's just call it a week, 171 reactions, 76 comments, basically, oh my word, congratulations. And now all of those 76 comments and 171, you know, uh, reactions, those people, their friends are like, oh, um, and, and his name is Barry Rutten, you know, so let's, it's like they're friends of Barry Rutten who their friends saw that they made a comment and they're like, oh, what the heck, let me come over here. So that's the kind of thing that we're talking about here. That's when you're teaching and, and let me just kind of give you a little um, mindset shift here. If Barry, whatever he said on our podcast interview, but he's a financial advisor, but let's say that he grabbed a microphone and a, and a camera and went live on Facebook or YouTube or LinkedIn and talked about the same thing. Fine, you should do that. Nothing wrong with video, but there's an extra little uh, nuance that you get when you're interviewed because you're the subject matter expert. You're being asked the questions. You have the answers and the responses. When you're the one promote, promoting, they realize that it's a pitch. Now, just remember that word I mentioned earlier, omnipresence. You have to do it all, but this is just one of the ways that sets yourself up just a, a notch a little bit more because when you're interviewed, you're the one people are listening to as the expert. And it the, the podcast interview is not a pitch. So it's really a, a neat nuance that way. 
another thing is when you're using when these authority positioning assets are being created and there's a lot of ways let me just tell you this here and again remember i said at the beginning there's no pitch so this you know when we're done here in a minute or two i'll ask i'll answer questions but there's nothing to buy <clears throat> but you can go and you can get interviewed on podcasts so you can go to podbooker.com and sign up for a free account and search through all kinds of podcasts, different genres, varieties, and, and industries, and reach out and connect with those um, podcast hosts and say, could I get interviewed on your show? I literally had someone today reach out to me that way through LinkedIn, because um, I have a lot of PR agencies that reach out and go, hey, can you interview my client? And I'll say yes, no, whatever. But this person had this approach, and I I um, sent him the link to book him. He, he was... Um, a fitness trainer for men who are executives or business owners. And I I thought, I love the way you're approaching number one. Hey, here's a really unique offering because you could just be a fitness trainer to anyone that needs to get into shape. But he really had a dialed in office audience. So I thought, okay, my audience of business owners, entrepreneurs, yeah, that'd be a great episode to talk about how to get healthy and how to stay fit. So I sent him the link. Wonderful. That's the way that you need to be doing that with in your business. Find people that have shows that you could get on and reach out and ask. So wh where I was going with this is when you're interviewed and when you're featured in the media, Google indexes that activity. So you know how I mentioned you know, someone Googles your name and your company? Well, you want them to see more than your website and your LinkedIn. How about where those arrows are? Oh, look, mention the media. Oh, an interview. Oh, a thumbnail um, from that podcast interview so, uh, from the video. It captures attention and it preframes your authority and expertise. This is just an, a neat example. And again, I do a lot of work in the financial services world. So this is uh, from a book called Shift. And down at the bottom is, is the website. So if you ever want to go to advisorist.com and then and either look at that long uh, URL or just put in there, you know, Terry. But this is just a neat example. Terry is an agent in California, saved a small town, 26,000 in benefit costs. Do you think Terry's worth $500 an hour? And when the author, um, Jeremiah de Marais, uh, does this presentation, he says, yeah, most people know. But then when he changes it and he goes, hey, this is the same Terry. Is he worth 500 an hour? About 80% of the people now are like, yeah. What's the difference? The as featured on. He's been mentioned in the media. And the same thing here. Here's a young person, 31 years old, because I'm 54, so 31 is young, right? <laughs> so here's someone young going, hey, give me $2,500. Let me tell you a financial plan. Mm, I don't know. But maybe, oh, look at this. Now, 80% of the room is going, yeah, that, that's uh, pretty legit. The only difference is the media citations. And so this is the kind of thing that you're not out there going, you need, you're doing a video, you need to call me because I have media citations. Uh-uh. You need to let others call you that expert authority. And why would they do that? Because you're out there and you're seen and heard. You're on the podcast. You're communicating to your target audience by email, social media, website. People are out there like, oh, you know, this is this is good information. And then they happen to see that you're, you know, picking being picked up in the media and it just ties in. Everything ties in. Remember how I said um earlier at the beginning of this talk that. Um, this is not something to start doing and stop doing everything else, that this works when this works and is done, it makes everything else work better. So think of, let's say that you did Facebook ads. Could you imagine if it's something like this? What if this was your Facebook ad before? Hey, I can help, whatever. And what if now your Facebook ad just had, you know, here you go. This kind of authority positioning helps whatever marketing that you do work even better. So here's the gift for you. Um, my book uh, on Amazon, it's called Authority Selling. Um, you can go buy it if you want on Amazon, or if you want, I'll send you the PDF version immediately. Just go over to my um, 360 site. Just go, maybe not even write this second, but just write it down. Mike Saunders, 360.com. Up at the top, there's a contact and just either send me an email or a text and say, I was on the SBDC webinar um, today and I would like to request a copy of the book and I'll and make sure you give me your email because I'll send you the link to, to read the PDF right away. And it's really helpful stuff. There's a lot more um, teaching in the book. Obviously, I can't in 20, 30 minutes, I can't teach the whole book, but that's the, the basis of my talk today. There's a lot more um, do-it-yourself free recommendations like I gave you about Pod Booker um, in the book. So I think you'll really, really like that. And I guess I'll stop with, this is the last slide, but to say, how committed are you? Have you heard this before? Are you interested or committed? 
you know, oh, that's cool. That's interesting. And you get off of this and then, you know, nine emails later, two voicemails and I'm busy and I get them and you don't do anything about it. If you see some value in this, get out there and take action and do it. And where did I ask for your credit card number? To, nowhere. I gave you some free resources, Podbooker, gave you some ideas on how to string together interviews to teach your target audience. And let's wrap it up with the, the mini audio seminar series that I mentioned at the beginning. Let's say that you identified the buyer's journey and let's say that there's 10 you know, hot questions that, man, when your prospects understand these 10, the light bulb has gone off at every everyone and they're amping up and getting more and more. They're like, I got it. That's wonderful. Love it, love it, love it. Well, what if you start getting interviewed on some podcasts, which is just a phone interview? Like I've done 900 and something interviews. I've done like four on video. I, I do phone interviews and most of the time they're going to do phone interviews. So you can talk about your business, but you, you do like maybe five or six to kind of get in the flow of, of talking on a, on an interview. But let's say that you now you start doing the interviews and you say to the podcast host, I want to talk about this one topic, whatever that is. And I want to cover these questions here, three, four questions all around this one topic. And, and they're going to go, cool. That's great. My audience will love that, but you're keeping it really contained to that one point on the buyer's journey. What if you have three, four, five of those interviews? Remember how I said that if you had, you know, like a Q&A or a PDF of, you know, this one point, well, hey, I've got all that content on my website. Yeah, but they yawn. But if you now offer, hey, re um, uh, register for my mini audio seminar series well, you will, where you will learn the blah, 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 blah in 20 minute audio podcast interviews delivered with a unique technology so that you can listen to these on the go. Um, put your name and email address here. And now it's like, oh, it's not a two hour pitch webinar. It's an audio seminar series that's gonna teach me bullet, 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 bullet. Well, now they put their name and email and email number one is, hey, great, here's in this podcast interview where I was interviewed, I'm talking about, you're gonna learn, have a nice day. Well, now they're listening to that and you're not pitching because you're the subject matter expert. They're learning this one point, not all over the place of everything you've ever done, one point, and then the next day, here comes the next, oh, hey, now, now that you learned what we did yesterday, today you're going to learn, click here. And if you could pull those, those people through five, six, seven steps, and then, of course, at the bottom of each one, hey, if that can help, let me know. And at the bottom of, of uh, you know, or at the end of that series, it's like, hey, let's, wrap, let's bring it all and, and, and wrap it up together. We learned, and here's what, and this is this, and my package called X click here. You see where I'm going with that? You see how that came together with learning what your target audience needs? And rather than sending emails only or PDFs or blog posts only, you're packaging that, that intellectual capital up into platforms that people respect. Go get yourself on some podcasts. It's not that hard. You might, you know, it's going to take a little bit of time to kind of reach out. And you, every single time you reach out, you're not going to get a yes, but get out there and get it done and then use those in your outreach. So. That's my last point. I'm going to stop screen sharing and just you know leave the thought here. How committed are you? And then uh, maybe Hannah, if you want to open it up to see if anyone has any questions, I am happy to answer any questions you may have. Great. Thank you so much, Mike. That was really interesting. Um, some really helpful information. And we do have a great question from Lori uh, mentioning that she was featured um, in the media a long time ago. And she's wondering what the shelf life for interviews is. If you were buying some consulting service and it was like really important to you and you saw someone out there and where they were pointing to something that they did years and years ago how would you feel so that's what that's my answer it's good if you have that on your website to show longevity but also you need to connect that to, to recency so good you're not just banking on the fact that yeah look i was speaking to the media last week and that's all you have show that you've been out there in your season but don't rely on just that you need to constantly do it you need new and new and new fresh great thank you um kind of a, a more broad question um this is a place where we see clients coming in a lot is they have their general market but have trouble sometimes getting into their niche of a market. Like you mentioned how helpful it was when someone reached out to you who said, I do personal training for this, yeah. you know, target. How do you get to that more narrow target? What recommendations do you have? Um, I think that it's a really big struggle that you feel like my thing and I want to get it to as many people. And as soon as they see what it does, they're going to buy. It. They don't. Because if you try to be too broad, no one pays attention. You've got to really dial it in. 
And, and that doesn't mean you can, um, and, and I'll use um, my business as an example, authority positioning is a subset of marketing. That could be niche enough. No, because I want to do authority marketing for financial professionals. Does that mean I only work with financial professionals? No, I've got clients that are attorneys and chiropractors, but that marketing campaign and my outreach to strategic alliances and getting to speak on events and summits, all in that helped me to really build that out. So the way that you need to figure out your micro niche, you have to, have to, have to. And when you can be seen as the expert in that micro niche, you then can easily expand it out a little bit or go to a different micro niche. How do you figure out who those are? Pull up your current client, or if you make sales and they're not ongoing clients, call up 10 or 15 of your customers and current clients and go, hey, what if I could pick your brain and, and get a favor? Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, you know, tell me about your business. The point is you can research and find your niche from your current clients and pick the ones you loved working with that had a high you know, profit margin. You're like, man, if I could only get more of these people. Well, who are those? Oh, well, you know what? Come to think of it, they're um, women-owned businesses that are typically in the medical services field, whatever that might be. I don't know. But then go find those people. Oh, so, okay, so here, let me answer it in this one exa more example. I've got a client who's a financial planner in California, and we're doing a series of three interviews, and we did number two. And I'm like, okay, let's get number three. And he was like, eh, dragging his feet. So I called him up literally like Monday of this week. And he's like, hey, yeah, you know, I've been dragging my feet because I just can't get my head wrapped around what the topic should be for the third interview. And, I, and we went through this exact question. He's like, I just want to really have it resonate with someone. So we, I started saying, tell me about, you know, a client that you would love to land. He goes, oh, well, they would be someone who, someone who, and then we kept talking out and he was like, well, you know, come to think of it, they typically are um, working for a governmental agency and they were our ex-military. And because of those two things, they've got certain investment accounts. So now he can mention the TBL, T, whatever the account was. And, oh, that's really cool. That's like, can you imagine the difference between I can help you plan for retirement or are you a, um, working for a government contractor and ex-military that has a blah, blah, blah account? I can help you maximize that. We need to talk. So the answer is you need to have that micro niche. And all you need to do is pull up your current contacts or a clients and just kind of in your own mind go, okay, what are so, boy, I love that one and that one. Yeah, I'd like to get more of these. So how do you clone them? You know, the 80-20 rule, Pareto's principle, you want to, if you have 100 clients and you want to double your business, you might not need 200, you might need 120. It might not double exactly, but if 80% of your profit comes from 20% of your clients, look at the top 20% that you love, love, love and clone them. So find out all you can about them. And that's going to help you find that niche or micro niche and then find out where they congregate. Oh, my word. Yeah, we go to a, the quarterly Rocky Mountain blah, 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 you know, conference. Yeah, why don't you come and sponsor the lunch or do a presentation or find us online? That's where you're going to find where they congregate and then provide value to them. Great. Thank you. And I will also mention that that is a process that we can help with at the SVDC. If you are trying to find out what your more narrow uh, niche is in your in your business and want to talk through that with one of our business consultants, we can definitely get that set up. And, and what's the cost of that, Hannah? Oh, it's totally free. So that's always Hey. Great. That works really well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Um and another barrier I think we see a lot of clients facing um, talking about their authority is when they're brand new and they're still honestly learning quite a bit as it, they, they just launched their business and they aren't really that authority yet or they don't see themselves as that authority yep. yet. What Imposter would you say to someone syndrome. who needs to yeah, combat that type of uh, mindset? Okay. So you know more than somebody. You might not be the guru of all gurus. You might not have 10,000 hours you know, yet but you're learning. So here's, here's an example. Um, I was listening to a podcast from one of the marketing uh, uh, gurus that I follow, and he was talking about someone that um, literally their kid, uh, and this is someone that I think she works part-time and just, just in an industry that you wouldn't even recognize. Who cares? Just works part-time. And her kid had horrendous eczema. And they went to every doctor at, out under the sun. No one could figure out nothing, nothing, nothing medications, creams, prescriptions, nothing. So she started researching and she found some whatever it was, right? Some, you know, combination of this to this and the eczema just cleared up. 
And then, so she started thinking through her process. She's like, well, wow, this is a great tip. And then this is a great product. And when you use the conjunction. And so she was talking to this person going, well, yeah, I mean, that's me, but I'm not any expert in that. And, and the guy goes, if my kid had bad eczema like that, you would darn well would be the expert. So get out there and you're one step ahead of the people behind you because they don't know what you know. And sometimes when you are authentic and transparent and going, look, I don't know at all, but let me tell you what I do know. I figured this out. And why don't we come together, do like a little group, you know, coaching call, mastermind, learn from each other, because I've, I have got it dialed in and I've got this figured out. So the point is, don't worry that you aren't, you know, 30 years of experience. You can have 30 days of experience, but you know something. And one of the competitive advantages you can have is to have your messaging dialed in really, really um, clear and concise so that someone gets it. And sometimes, you know, using the big language and the PhD level talk doesn't work. You don't need that. Just kind of talk. So I think that's the, the way to combat um, shiny object. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> shiny object syndrome is bad, too. But imposter syndrome is just get out there and make a difference in people's lives. And then the more you see you impacting people's lives and you see your authority elevating, your own confidence will increase. And then one of the biggest things is get feedback, get reviews, get testimonials. I've probably got 250 on my website, but I started at one. And every one you get, it's like, oh, oh yeah, Betty was happy with, oh, that's awesome. And it encourages you. Awesome. That's really encouraging. Thank you, Mike. Um, we have another question asking for your take on this idea. Um, Lori's asking about what if you have like a screen playing your authority messages in your waiting room, kind of like how dentists do. Is that cheesy or is that what you should be looking at? It's exactly what you should be doing. I mean, that's a hundred percent. So if you have a waiting room and you, you know, like, like some of the slides I was showing, like, Hey, I was interviewed on, you might start having people going, oh, I'm going to scan that QR code and listen to that with my earbuds while I'm in the waiting room. I've even heard some trainers say, hey, if, if you have a business that has a waiting room, get all of your customers' testimonials and handwritten notes and all of that. And whether you put it up on the screen or you create a book that's sitting right out there for people to page through, yes, all of that. You know, if, if people sent you, if you had 50 people sending you a video testimonial, cool, take a screenshot of that, have it transcribed and have it in writing as well so that it could be on your, um, uh, you know, in a little booklet. So screen, book, awesome. That's exactly what you should be doing. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I know we are coming up close on the hour. So if anyone does have final questions, please feel free to put those in the chat. And um, I did put my- So this wasn't uh, part one of four. Aren't we going for like three more hours and just roll? <laughs> We're keeping it short and concise today. I okay, okay, okay. For that, leave, them, leave them wanting more. <laughs> exactly. We do really appreciate your expertise, Mike. And I did put um, Mike's direct scheduling link for our SBDC appointments in the chat. If you're interested in following up with him on these types of topics, um, you can always go to that. That will be in the follow-up email as well. And again, I just want to give a big thank you and shout out to our partners at the um, Westminster Economic Development uh, Corporation. And they uh, co-sponsored this event with us and sponsored it. Um, so just thank you to, to them. And they have great resources as well. So you can check out their website also in the chat. Um, so Mike, any final words you want to leave with everyone today? Hopefully people took notes. If you didn't, when this stops, take 10 minutes and do a brain dump and write down some notes and write down one or two action steps that you will take before the end of the day or tomorrow. Tomorrow's Friday. Get her done, right? You know, get things out there in motion. And I don't care whether it's I'm going to sign up for that free account with Podbooker and I'm going to reach out and, and at least ask three or four podcasters if I can come on the show. Get her done. You know, so that's the thing I would recommend is take action. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Those are great words of wisdom um, that we'll leave you all with today. So thank you again, everyone, for joining. Thank you, Mike, uh, for the information. And we wish you all a great afternoon.